Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here we go again. 17th video in atomic structure. Let's get started. Bam! All right, today we're going to be talking about the stable isotopes of carbon. Here is a little structure, atomic structure of carbon, if you will. You should see in the center there, the green and the red, just like before with the isotopes of hydrogen, we have protons and neutrons respectively. And on the outside in those little ring things are the electrons of carbon. Okay, this is called carbon-12. There are six protons for carbon, any carbon element, and then there are six neutrons as well. That's why it's 12 minus the six will give me the six neutrons. The percent abundance naturally occurring is 98.89%. This is a non-radioactive isotope of carbon-12. Obviously, this is the most abundant isotope of carbon. There is another isotope of carbon, and it is called carbon-13. So there are seven neutrons and six protons in carbon-13. There are still six electrons in both of these isotopes. There is one additional neutron in the nucleus, and that's why it's carbon-13. The percent abundance is just over 1% at 1.109%. It is also a non-radioactive isotope. Then we have one more isotope of carbon, and that is right here, and that's called carbon-14. Okay, this is two more additional neutrons than carbon-12. Okay, and so there are eight neutrons in the nucleus and six protons. Again, all of these isotopes of carbon have six protons. That defines the element. That's the atomic number. And they all have six electrons. The number of neutrons in the nucleus differs between six, seven, and eight, respectively, in carbon-12, 13, and 14. Okay, so this isotope is very small in percentage. It is only one part in one trillion. Okay, this is the only of the three naturally occurring, occurring isotopes that is radioactive. Its half-life is 5,730 years. Okay, we'll talk about half-lives another time. All the isotopes of the same element, they have the same number of protons, therefore the same element of carbon, have the same chemical reactivity because they have the same number of electrons. That's why. Okay? The average mass of all the stable isotopes of carbon is 12.0107. Okay? That is taking its mass, multiplying it by its percentage, and then summing them up, and that's the number that you get, which is 12.0107. On your periodic table, it might be 12.011 uh, or 12.01, depending on your periodic table that you have. But that is the number that's on the periodic table. That's that decimal number. That is the average atomic mass of all the naturally occurring isotopes of carbon or any element of that particular element. That's why they're decimal numbers. Okay, here's a little bit of humor and then some unfortunate history as well. What did one scientist say when he found two isotopes of helium? <laughs> or I think it was just he he. Okay, this right here is the Hindenburg in 1937. It was flying over New York. Now, the Hindenburg was designed by the Germans, an incredible engineering feat. It was originally designed to be filled up with helium gas. Helium gas is a noble gas, and it is relatively, well, it is non-reactive. There are actually no stable compounds with helium. Okay. However, there was a little problem with the production of uh, or acquiring enough helium. So what the German engineers did instead is that they filled up the Hindenburgs with hydrogen gas. It is a less massive gas, therefore the uh, Hindenburgs had more the Zeppelins, uh, that's a Zeppelin, the Zeppelins had uh, more buoyancy to them. Unfortunately, Hydrogen is a flammable gas, and that same day, later on, it, when it was in New Jersey, it uh, hit into a tower and it caught on fire with the spark. So that is the unfortunate part of history there. There were a number of people that died in that. Okay, so, but very interesting science behind the whole Zeppelins. I am the Crazy Hat Chemist. I hope you enjoyed that video. And uh, here is another cool hat. I believe I got this from Sean, too. Um, Sean, thank you very much for my cool hat. 
Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.